let's go back to the the, the first question, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the publishers got caught flat footed on streaming, right? So my point of view is that the same thing is going on with these third party sites that are enabling tournament play without having official relationships with the publishers, right? And again, I think the publishers and the publishers, there, there's a lot of things going on at the publishers. Publishers are most focused on making great games, right? But while that's happening, you're having third party, you're having data, I won't say stolen because that may be too strong a word, but let's just say data is being used from a game and the publisher is getting nothing for it, for the, right? Except for the marketing piece of it. And um, I, I'm, I'm a person who's, who's sort of pointing it out and saying, look, this happened on streaming. We can't let this happen here. Um, that's A. And B is, the other piece is, if you understand the NBA and the NFL and the way they manage their rights, right? They go to third parties, Genius, Sport Radar. That does a couple things, right? One is it keeps the NBA or the NFL or baseball out of the business of being licensed on a state-by-state -state basis. Now, I can assure you that the owner of the New York Yankees um, or, or the New Jersey Nets, they don't want to go through licensing, right? So the way, or the commissioner, or, you know, commissioner of the NBA, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't think he's, in, he's gone through licensing, but all of these folks, right, they don't want to go through licensing on a state-by-state -state basis. It's a very invasive policy uh, procedure and nobody wants to go through it. So the way they have structured these deals is they have they're using these third parties genius sport radar as third as third parties to basically they sell the data to them and then those folks go out and sell the data to licensing and wagering and that has worked out really well because it insulates the leagues it keeps them out of the licensing business and okay. it's a nice steady cash flow uh at the moment sport radar and genius are getting beat up in the market but you know, that's a real business and they serve a real function. Mm. So if you think about the way this is going to work for esports, right? The publishers are very similar to the leagues, if you will, right? And that the publishers, they don't want to go through licensing. The, the board for publishers don't want to go through licensing. The people who run the, the, the publisher business, they don't want to go through licensing, right? So this model of third party, it's called first party data, right, uh -huh. is the solution to the leagues, uh, to the publishers, right, being able to play in this wagering space without actually directly playing at it and not going through licensing. So there's two very strong arguments for this first party, that three, I would say. Um, the, the first one being that you're protecting your IP, and that's that's a good thing, right? The second, the second reason is what we just talked about with, uh, it insulates you from the licensing piece, right? And the, the third point is that it, it, it allows you, right, to have a legitimate data stream for the wagering services that people can't dispute. Yeah. And, it's, and in terms of optics as well, I mean, to have that sort of buffer um, company sort of handling the licenses, it really separates the publisher with, with the betting world as well. And that's, that's an incredible incredibly important important thing <laughs> yes it, it is yeah. it is a very important thing 